Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Be Rich. I hope the audio is better today. I heard a lot of complaints about my audio quality yesterday. I'm wearing a different set of uh, microphones. I hope the clarity is improved. But then I guess I'll know today in the comments if things are better or not. Because Shash was able to hear me, so he didn't tell me anything. So I guess things were okay. But this is a problem when you're streaming. Sometimes we don't know what's happening till it's too late. So if audio is an issue, we'll try and rectify it again in the next video. So Shashwat, what do we have today? Uh, we have uh, Facebook, uh, or basically Fang, Fang stocks. You have Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. These stocks have been the staple of uh, everyone's idea of what tech stocks are. So something which uh, I figured that we could talk about today was, uh, you know, whether it really does make sense to consider investing in, uh, you know, these companies, uh, especially considering the AI boom, which just happened very recently. So that's something I wanted to take a look at today. Cool. Yeah. So, so should we be buying these stocks? Yeah, that's that's the question. So I'll first put out the reasoning to what people, uh, you know, which people have for whether or not to invest in these companies. So the reasoning is that uh, their growth rate is supposed to be exceptional and their growth rate is supposed to sort of make up for uh, the high price to earnings ratio, which it trades at. So if you use discounted cash flow, you should be able to see, uh, you know, a large enough uh, in increase in their uh, earnings to justify the the PE, which you which you're basically uh, which it's trading at so that's the general idea of uh, why you buy these growth i mean they're considered growth companies why you buy these growth companies so you know that being said i suppose it's uh, a good idea to maybe look at um, what each of these companies uh, go through and what the financials are and then we can take it forward from there um, i'm going to try presenting my screen with something we can try doing something new here so let's see if that captures on to uh, there we go. Yeah. It. So, Let's done it. Yeah. So this is um, I I use Yahoo Finance for all my preliminary uh, checks, which research. I do on these company. Yeah, research on these companies. So if you look at it, uh, Meta platforms. It's not Facebook anymore. So I guess it should be called Mang, <laughs> not Fang. <laughs> Mang stocks. Mangled. <laughs> the fan mangled. <laughs> A mangled. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> So if you look at Facebook or Meta platforms, it's trading at a PE of uh, 39.59. It's right here. And its earnings mm -hmm. per share, it's uh, 7.71. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's how they calculate its PE ratio. And uh, surprisingly, not, I mean, not surprisingly enough, it's uh, quite expensive. And this is something which uh, you can sort of use as a gauge, a preliminary gauge of what you're getting your hands on. So now let's look at what's happened with Meta over the past year. Over the past year, Meta has basically been on an uptick in the sense that uh, you can clearly see the stock price go up from about 167 or 180 all the way to 305. So a quick check which we can do to uh, see how much that comes up to is uh, 305 minus 180 divided by uh, 180. And all of this is very basic fundamental stuff which I'm doing. So there's been, uh, share this tab instead. So there's been a 69%. So if you multiply this by 100, it'll come up to 69% in terms of its uh, increase in its uh, value. So this is quite good. And uh, this is what's happened over the past year. Its uh, PE has come up. And now the question I have sort of is that, you know, the metaverse thing was a huge failure because it's no one's using the metaverse pretty much. Now the question is what's happening with their financials, which is causing this? So let's go into the financials and let's look at their uh, total revenue. So the total revenue from uh, the year 2021 till 2022 uh, has actually declined. But if you actually Correct. look at their, uh, uh, let's look at their net income, which is what we actually care about. Uh, one second, net interest income uh, tax. You crossed it. Oh, I crossed it. Uh, one second. Net income, yeah. Uh, it's actually gone down. Their net income has gone down and uh, their operating expenses have gone up. In fact, their revenue yeah. has gone down. Their operating expenses has, go has gone up. And this can be attributed to sort of uh, wages going up 
so and uh, they've been sinking a lot of money into meta or metaverse and uh, you can as actually see that their uh, numbers are sort of uh, worse off than what you would expect for a company which is supposed to post high growth so that being said i'm not really convinced on metaverse i'm not convinced on meta platforms so i would say hold off on this and if you actually look at the side we can actually go into the next company amazon and uh, amazon's pe ratio unsurprisingly is at 328 which is a huge pe ratio to be having but uh, if we look at their justification we can look at the statistics uh, we can look at their profit margins it's only 2.43% and uh, their earnings before uh, interest tax and depreciation is 63.43 billion dollars and uh, we can sort of look at their uh, their book value per share is 16 times so that's you're, you're pretty much uh, have it's, it's a huge 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 uh, premium which you're paying for this company which makes sense and if you look at their financials you can uh, basically see why this is so because if you look at their revenue since 2019 it's been increasing at an uh, amazing pace in the sense that uh, you also see that their gross profit hasn't really uh, changed much year on year so this basically shows you that they're uh, um, they're trying to uh, prioritize total revenue growth instead of uh, profit growth and uh, their cost of revenue is actually increasing at a pretty fast faster pace than the than what their revenue is increasing at so all of this you can sort of gauge from uh, just uh, looking at their uh, uh, looking at their income statement statistics so, yeah yeah your statistics again uh, amazon is a little too expensive i'd say for me what do you think i agree i won't touch any of the fangs right now even apple is yeah. too expensive it's way too and expensive the problem is this yeah. problem is there's too much money chasing a few stocks that's a problem exactly and there are much far better what do you call wiser buys to do in the american market right now compared yeah. to these fangs and these fangs have been beaten to death now they're mangs of course they've been yeah. beaten to death and everyone fang 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 fang, 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 fang. yeah they've been overdoing it it's like and completely lopsided it is and they have negative free cash flow which is always a terrible 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 thing to have to yes correct so but, uh, that being said what it give what it gives an opportunity for an investor is because people are so what do you call fixated on these stocks these tech stocks yeah. it gives a lot of uh, what do you call ocean and ocean of breath for these other companies which are very good companies very good buys and they are at very fabulous prices because no one's interested in it because it's not uh, looking fancy to say you know exactly. you want some small small company which is doing good operations has a good revenue and has a steady growth it's not wow but if i own yeah. apple shares you know you can go on saying i know apple you know so that so i get it i get it and i don't think any there's anything in the fang companies which is worth buying netflix is terrible yeah. google is the only one but google is really overpriced i i think before let's get let's get to uh, google because we're talking about that uh mm-hmm. google your yeah, google is actually one of the more relatively fairly valued companies in my opinion because i mean just look compared at the others ratio, yeah compared yeah. to the others relatively of course the p ratio is 29.65 still a little too expensive for a company in our books of course and uh, we can sort of look at what their uh, trajectory has been over the past year their, their share price has remained flat over the past year but let's look at their financials because that's where we really see what's going on in the company uh and if you actually look at their uh if you actually look at their total revenue it's actually been increasing which is a good sign definitely and if you look at their gross profit has also been increasing albeit at a slower pace from 2020 till uh, this thing uh, yeah all this is a covid right? boom yeah all yeah, this work from home boom which happened for them yeah and uh, th- that being said that it's it, it's okay i mean the, you're pretty much still seen a gross profit increase however <laughs> their operating expense has uh, increased phenomenally which has meant that their net income uh, has actually gone down so that's interesting yes. and that basically shows you why the company hasn't really moved much over the past year because their net income hasn't uh, moved very much. it's actually gone down and if you look actually look at their uh, this this is a nice chart which tells you what's happening with uh, uh, google over the past year it's uh, re- their earnings have gone down from uh, the year before even though the revenue has gone up 
and this is the same trend which we saw with amazon which is basically an indication of the macroeconomic uh, factors which uh, yes. we're seeing in the us so that's that's something to keep in mind wage inflation and, yeah wage inflation price inflation yeah and uh, finally we can go back to netflix and i think this is the worst one of the lot uh yeah. and the pe ratio is at 50.05 the, my problem with netflix is that it's in an industry where your competitors like amazon prime and hotstar they're willing to burn a lot of money and it's more of a battle of who can burn the most amount of money and that made sense when interest rates were 0% but then when interest rates are, are positive we have positive real in, uh, real interest rates what ends up happening is that you can't burn money the way you used to so competition becomes sort of difficult and becomes very loss making when you do engage in competition that way correct and, and the uh, thing for the lucky thing for hotstar and disney is they have other revenue other businesses other streams of money amazon has other revenues of avenues of money coming in revenue coming in Netflix has nothing else like other than Netflix. Yes. And uh, if you actually look at their financials, you can't financials, burn, you can't burn money. Yeah. And if you look at the financials, let's take a look at what's going on under the hood. This is like popping open the hood of a car to try to figure out what the hell is going on with the engine, what horsepower, etc. So if you look at their uh, operating or not operating income, if you look at their revenue, it has increased. However, uh, their net income has actually declined and uh, by a small margin. and this is uh, again the us is slowing down and netflix has banned uh, password sharing so that sort of had an uptick in terms of their uh, quarterly re- uh, profits if i'm i'm guessing one second yeah. yeah if you look at the quarter to quarter change it has gone up because netflix sort of barred password sharing because they're in a really tough spot and yes uh, and i think they're starting to advertise they're looking at advertisement or they've already started advertising on one of yeah they've already started advertising yeah So let's look at their cash flow of course and see what's going on. They do have positive free cash flow which is always a good sign and uh, yeah this is having positive free cash flow is definitely a good sign but it's way too expensive to uh, even consider as a possible purchase. But in the same stead let's look at um, Unilever which is a company which we've been uh, you know talking about so much. Let's compare the financials of Unilever in comparison to these companies. Over look the, the past year, you, yeah, look, the P ratio itself is very telling, and your dividend yield you're getting three point five one percent already, so that's wonderful. And let's actually look at the financials uh, and take a look at what what we have under the hood. Their revenue has been going up. In fact, uh, over the past year, it's gone up uh, tremendously, which is a wonderful sign. Their uh, uh, net income has gone up by over, uh, yeah, the the net income has gone up. and uh, the eps has gone up this is a wonderful sign and let's look at the free cash flow which is what so they they have a consistent uh, they have a consistent this thing of record of posting uh, positive free, free cash flow yeah and uh, this is a wonderful sign let's look at their ratios as well i suppose and see where where, where we stand the trailing pe is uh, 14.52 of course this is an estimate of what the uh, market thinks their uh, forward pe would be which is 18 Correct. and the price to book is 6.19 that's fine you uh, that's not much you can do about that there um, no but for a company like this you don't worry about price to book anyways yeah you don't you don't worry much about it and uh, that being said it's it, this is a good sign for a company which uh, which you want to be able to look at and uh, you can right. also look at these other tabs called analysis and stuff which will tell you what um, people think i mean okay there's no analysis here but for the bigger companies like apple and google you'll be able to find um, companies which uh, or people who have actually put up analysis on this yes so that's something which uh, but you should keep in caveat is analysis is just analysis it's yes. not fact so yeah. just remember that and uh, i'm just going to finally take a look at apple the final uh, the final pillar to mangs mangs talks and Mana. yeah apple mana yeah <laughs> apple is uh, apple over the past year has been doing okay uh, it's been flat but uh, you have their pe which is at 30.25 and uh, they're paying a dividend of course but it's way too expensive and warren buffett has been uh, selling apple because you know it's a it's a great price to get out of apple and uh, yes yes hold your cash for better opportunities at hand because so the market something... corrects even apple will correct 
Yes, and uh, we can just take a look at their financials, I suppose. Uh, yeah, their uh, revenue has gone up over the past uh, four years. It's been uh, climbing each year, year on year. That's a good sign. Their, uh, let's take a look at their uh, net income. Their net income has also been climbing. And it actually, oh, from 2020 to 2021, there's a huge jump, especially because of the stimulus checks which were put out and people were able to buy uh, more of Apple products. And uh, there's been a smaller jump from 2021 to 2022 as you return to normalcy. And uh, their operating expenses have, of course, climbed, but that doesn't that, that still hasn't impacted their net income growth. Yeah, much. but it hasn't climbed the way Facebook has climbed. Yeah. So, so and let's take a exactly. look at their free cash flow, of course. Uh, just to take a, yeah, they have enormous free cash flow. Apple is just spewing cash. This is crazy. But um, that's it's one of the biggest companies in the world. So there's no surprise here. And uh, this is what's happening with Apple. And if you actually look at this chart, you'll be able to see what's happening uh, quarter over quarter, year on year. Uh, you can check quarterly as well if you'd like. And uh, this is what's been happening with Apple. So that's that's your fang stocks for you and uh yeah that's that this is pretty much a preliminary analysis of whether to get into fang stocks or not so that that's that's pretty much yeah yeah and i would strongly suggest that uh, what do you call it? you look at other companies before you just look at what's flashing in the news and what's flashing on your ticker deep dive and see what's there in the market you know, explore the shelves in the supermarket before you go for your loyal brand. Because sometimes there might be another brand which is there, which might be a better buy. I mean, it's just crazy the amount of money just chasing these companies. I don't know if, if it's really warranted. I don't know. In my opinion, I think there are better buys. But we are not advisors. As Sartik always keeps saying, these are just our opinions. If Shash has asked me to buy it, I won't buy it. I would be telling him, let's look for something better. I would say. Oh, I also just want to share one more thing which people can sort of look at. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is, I just went into the screeners tab of Yahoo Finance and uh, you just, there's one thing called top stocks owned by Warren Buffett and uh, you just need to sort of uh, register for this free trial and uh, you can uh, look at uh, what Warren Buffett himself owns and uh, you can actually even search up Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, 13F form. This is just pulling it up for you. You don't even need to do this. You can just search it up yourself. And uh, one second, Warren Buffett holdings. Yeah, I'll just share this tab instead. Yeah, so this, you pretty much have uh, the entire holding this thing of Warren Buffett. And you see companies like Marubeni, which is the Japanese conglomerate, which he bought. And... Uh, Activision, Blizzard, Ally Finance, Amazon. So he does own a, a very little bit amount of Amazon, of course. And uh, American Express, Apple, which he owns uh, a lot of shares of, Bank of America. And yeah, you pretty much have all, all of his holdings uh, just made available public. And, you know, if you don't want to figure out what to invest in, you just need to pull up Warren Buffett's uh, portfolio and put your money into whatever he puts his money into you'd be like an ambulance chaser of course but uh yeah that's you all that's all you need to do and it does the job i would say you're more, you're more like atm chaser <laughs> <laughs> atm van chaser <laughs> hoping the van cracks open <laughs> but yeah this is very true anybody can become a active uh, warren buffett mutual fund you can create a Warren Buffett uh, mutual fund and you just buy whatever, track whatever Warren is buying and keep buying it. Exactly. It's much true and it's very possible. And that's why I keep saying you don't need active fund managers. You don't need to. All this information is there. Like Shasha just pulled it from the internet in five to ten minutes. You can see all of it. Then you, if you don't know how to analyze, you can you trust Warren, you can go with that. And as he moves, you also move. If he's dumping a certain company, you dump it. You know, you and can move along you with have it. All his legacy holdings as well. You see Kraft Heinz, you have, uh, you know, Coca-Cola, you have uh, American Express. All of these companies which he bought years and years ago, you, you it, it all shows up on uh, uh, publicly and the information is all right there. It's uh, definitely within reach and you don't have to buy Yahoo Premium in order to be able to check it. Yes, and this is true for any big investor in America. The information is public knowledge. So you can find this information without much effort. You can find this. So you can yeah, emulate and, anyone uh, you want. 
and there's this nice thing called uh, the Warren Buffett archive and you can search up any topic is ever talked about ever so yes. i guess you can search up amazon and uh, it'll tell you i didn't pull the trigger to buy amazon and uh, buffett on missing amazon and google amazon yes. buy is in the shit of it from there sure. yeah and uh, i suppose we can also uh, in upcoming videos we can sort of look at these uh, videos and analyze some of Warren Buffett's archives this if question that's is interesting to you Scarbet is the audio play sure. in Indianapolis yeah of course with the full of understanding course. that one so if you guys are interested in that please do let us know in the comments and we can make that happen for you cool don't trouble us anyway anything else more you want to add such it because we have run the clock up yeah so that's about it and uh, that's what we think about fang stocks and uh, do let us know about this format if you like the screen sharing stuff and you like us putting stuff up on screen while we actively talk about it and uh, i'll definitely make sure that uh, you can see all that stuff visually when we do talk about those things yes please do type in the comments down below any specific sectors you want us to talk about in the american market and like shashut said any technology we can implement to make this experience for you more informative and better do let us know in the comments down below and we'll try and, and uh, for you guys if you want us to react to some videos or something where uh you know something warren buffett has said or a, or a short enough clip which will fit in about 10 15 minutes definitely do link it down in uh, the comments and we'll take a look at it that sounds like a good idea anyway thanks for joining us today and we hope you found this video informative and entertaining as always do turn on the bell notification and subscribe to our channel if you haven't and we will see you in the next one thank you thank you on 26th august we are doing an event in bangalore whitefield those desirous of meeting me in that event can contact the whatsapp number or the email given below my team will give you the details thank you once again for supporting be rich it's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me i have written two books in english the alchemy of money and ordinary stocks extraordinary profits these books are published by us and are ready if you want to procure a copy send us a message to the whatsapp number given below and my team would respond to you if you want an amazon kindle copy you can click the link below finally those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to beerichenglish@gmail.com once again i thank you for your support if you like this video press the subscribe button of my channel hit the like button and turn on the bell notification